and that's just, <coughs> pardon me, the agenda for public presentations. It's a 20-minute time limit. Uh, the agenda public comment period is an opportunity for the citizens to give input on issues on the board's agenda, which are not subject of a public hearing, and it's not intended as a question and answer period. This period has a 20-minute limit, and such time will be equally split among the members or the individuals who have signed up. For individuals who wish to give input on Redland County issues which are not on the board's agenda, there is a 60-minute general public comment period at the end of each meeting. Ms. Nelson, has anyone signed up? I guess Mr. Chairman, too. Uh, first up is Ms. Cheryl Colors. Good morning, everyone. My name is Cheryl Colors, and I live at 1605 Rocky Hollow Road in Bentonville, Virginia. I'm blessed to live right along the Shenandoah River, the South Fork of the Shenandoah River. The love I have for Warren County receives in my heart. As a lifelong resident, I've not only lived, but spent my entire nursing career here as well. The names often associated with my county are, not, are sadly not new to me. I've heard them all my life. Helltown, crooked, corrupt. My great-grandmother lived in Frederick County, and she was not pleased when my granny and her family moved to Front Royal to be closer to the work at Avtex. They were moving to Helltown. <coughs> now I understand I love my great-grandmother very deeply. Still do. But every time we came to the double bridges, she would say, well, you know you're in Front Royal because it stinks. And that always upset me. The smell was Aptex. I was nine years old when my great-grandmother passed away. So you see my love of Warren County is long and enduring. My training as a nurse has taught me to be a good listener. And I listened intently during the meetings here at the budget process and as well to the residents of South River while obtaining signatures to run as an independent for the South River District Supervisor seat. The residents are angry and they want to get to the bottom of what happened to the EVA. They also want to stop this from ever happening again. Building a positive identity for Warren County takes trust, integrity, accountability, and time. We can't wait for trials or recriminations. It's a healing process that must begin now. I've given this a lot of thought to have a more accountable and transparency. I'm recommending a fraud, waste, and abuse hotline. It's time to start showing the community that the governing body of Warren County is serious about preventing scandal and corruption. A template for how a hotline would work already exists. The Virginia State Fraud, Waste, and Abuse Hotline. And here's how it works. The caller is anonymous. The caller is given a case number when making a report. The concern is investigated and action taken as warranted. Creating a hotline gives an opportunity to be our county, for everyone in the county, to be our county's keeper without fear of retaliation, hostile work environment, or loss of employment. The fraud, waste, and abuse hotline could also save the county money, where residents and our hardworking county employees see waste. I strongly urge the Warren County Board of Supervisors to show the residents your commitment to a positive, brighter future for Warren County and establish this hotline. To the residents of South River Districts, as well as all Warren County residents, if the hotline doesn't get created now, I can promise you, if elected South River Supervisor in November, I will make this one of my top priorities. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this morning and your consideration of my recommendation.
James Fox Jr. Good morning. My name is James Granville Fox Jr. I live at 392 Windy Ridge Road, Carolina, Virginia. Um, I spoke to my supervisor, Mr. Sayer, by phone, and he said I could come and speak this morning. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if I meet your criteria or not, but I'm here to shop. Uh, I would like to encourage the Board of Supervisors to consider not raising the tax rate and I'm not sure when you vote on that. And here's one of my reasons for that. My reassessment went up 19%, which amounted to approximately $58,000. My question to you is, have you looked over the budget and so forth, looking at what the reassessment will bring to you before you raise the tax rate? Has that been looked at at all? Probably you have. But that's something I would like for you to do. See how many people have a 19% increase. I would assume that most people have an increase, but I don't know that. My second point is, we, my son and I are building a garage, two-car garage that does count for some of it, but it's not finished. Well, the person who came to my house assumed that I would finish it in a reasonable amount of time, and my rate actually went up 60, $69,000. Well, I had the opportunity to go to the uh, yeah, to the OU Center and talk to the gentleman, and they said, we will reevaluate that. My question is, how many other people may have been in the same boat and had their, their taxes for assessment raised without having all the facts? The guy did not come back. He assumed too much. My other point is, when I read the paper, if, it, if part of it is correct, there may be some money coming back to the county from the EDA. I don't know that. You know, there may or may not be. So that should have, should be a part of your equation and establish the tax rate. Do you have monies out there that could come back? Another thing I would say, and you probably don't need to say this a well in the way, be good stewards. Look at as if you're running your own budget. Uh, it's not play money. It's real money. People are paying their taxes and expecting a, a fair return. Another point I would like to make is, if I've been told, I think it's a reliable source. Our county is among, if not the lowest, among the lowest as far as salaries for teachers. And I think that should be a priority when you think when you set the budget, it probably is. But I'd like to underline that. Our teachers, we should take care of them so they don't stay here a year to leave. I have three children who are doing great, They're all graduated from County High School have good education. I'd like to see that continue. I know for a fact that people who have left because there's not enough money. <clears throat> you know, another thing is law enforcement. Just make sure there's, that we have that protection for the citizens in your budget. And lastly, I talked to the gentleman here from VDOT. Is there anything you could do about Rockland Road for railroad tracks? Uh, it has to be the worst, for sure in county, if not in the state. And I know they're going to have a crossover or something in the future. I'm not sure if I'm going to live to see that. But if, if any way you can put any pressure on the, on the railroads or realize that there's their issues, their issue. But uh, I would appreciate anybody to step up and help in that. Thank you for listening to me. Have a good day. Is there anyone else? Mr. Chairman, no one else has signed up. Is there anyone who cares to speak on agenda items at this time? Second call. Good morning. I am um, Christy Sowers Atwood, and I come, I live at 1255 Pilgrim's Way in Bentonville, Virginia. This morning, I come before you and I ask you to put a, a, morat a moratorium on spending until after the grand jury um, session is held this summer. The reason being, I don't think all the players have been announced, and with H&W Construction and Cornerstone LLC, as well as the Aikens Group all being one and the same, they've got a lot of skin in the game. I ask that no money is given to them until after we hear what is happening with the EDA. I also ask that you make this EDA audit public. I sent an email and you said that the EDA was the custodian of records. 
However, he will not even email me back. This EDA audit is a farce. It is, I have received so much information and researched it myself, and there are so many holes, and I'm not even a lawyer, and I can pick through it. But I'm asking that you look at who has investments in Davenport, why Davenport is always used, um, and just that the, the procurement process of the county is, is followed correctly, because I've seen so many ways that it is not. And it also, it all comes back to the same thing. That's why I would really ask you to please just stop the spending. We can hold off until September until we hear about everything that is going on in this because everything has not been named.